everybody, welcome to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob and this is the 41st episode in my 4th Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy series. I've got a, a decent bit to go through here at the beginning of this episode. Comments from primarily two people, Sarah Feingold and Jeff. Um, Sarah, a couple episodes ago, gave a couple of good comments that I, I just now read. Um, slow can be used to run scouts away from Manicor Riders if they don't dispel it, and it also kind of dispends on the situation. I think that's a useful thing to try to keep in mind. I don't know that it will matter. It would it would be helpful against like a lone Manicor Rider. Uh, if it was a scout, I really wanted to keep. If there's a group of Manicor Riders, I'd have to be careful doing that because they could attack with one and then attack with another one. And if you're sitting there trying to slow down all those un units, you'll burn through your mana very quickly. But against a battle with just one Manicor Rider, if one of them's trying to hunt down a scout like my flyer here, I could probably use slow to get away if it's an isolated Manicor Rider. And I've seen a few of them. So useful to keep in mind. Um, and then Sarah also mentioned that I should consider disjuncting some global spells if there's some up. So I can look at those up here and I'm sure that, yeah, it's, um, well, Inspire Loyalty is one thing, but I was thinking more along the lines of the big Warlord spells. Global Assault. Like, down here, the Tigrans have Global Assault cast. I think they're the only, I think they're the only people who have it, actually. That kind of surprises me that others don't have it. Maybe... Maybe red and blue are disjuncting each other, but it might be worth uh, trying me trying to disjunct this. Um, I'll have to take a look at that. Maybe maybe I can do that now. I'm not actually I'm not casting a spell actively just yet, and I am fighting the Tigran. Let's see let's see what it would take to get rid of that. Back down here to the bottom. Whoops. Let's try that again. Go down here, click on this, and click disjunct. Three turns, 75% chance of success. Uh, that's kind of a tough call. I don't know if those three turns are worth it, but... I'll go ahead and start doing that. It's, I'm kind of tearing apart... Well, actually, you know what? Hang on. The Tigrans are the only ones who have it up, and I gotta imagine where I'm gonna be in three turns when dealing with the Tigrans. I got a feeling I'm gonna take another big city here, and then we'll be cruising on towards their capital. I would suspect within three turns I will be closing in on the Tigran capital. So far they haven't been able to stop me. So I actually don't think I'm going to try to disjunct that, just because by the time I disjunct it, they might be virtually out of the game anyway. But it is still a good idea, and I, I should keep an eye out for, like, if red, or especially, especially if blue gets that up. Blue is going to be the toughest fight, I think, um, depending on how much damage the other two have done to her. She is kind of in the middle of them, but, um, yeah, good, good thinking, good idea to keep in mind going forward. Comments from Jeff this week had, um, well, Jeff's comment actually had, uh, prompted me to do a whole lot of before recording stuff here. And I wanted to talk a little bit about my king. So I'm kind of building this guy to be a super tanky fighter. And he is going to be great, especially against anyone who does primarily physical damage. The problem is that as I get ready to go up against blue with the elf manacle riders and flick stun, I'm going to need more shock resistance, prefer preferably shock immunity. I only have 60% right now. Um, and I... I could, I was looking at uh, my other heroes, and my sorcerer does have an item, these boots that give shock protection, as well as a little bit of defense, but I'm making tireless boots for my king. I need him to have tireless, and I don't want the tireless ability to be on the shield, because I want the king to still have the shield ability, and you can only get that on a shield. Um, plus, um, shield can give you some other useful benefits. So what I think I've decided to do I stick with the plan of making the tireless boots for my king. And then, um, as soon as those are done, I'm going to actually reconfigure and build my own shield and my own two rings. And each of them will have 20% shock protection on them. At least I assume it's 20%. The, the Arcane Forge doesn't tell you, but I'm pretty sure it's 20%. Um, each of these three will have 20% res shock resistance, which, when combined with Lightning Rod Banner, will get me to uh, full 100%. And then the uh, the ribbing ring of heat deflection here, obviously that's going to go. But I can add a fire protection onto one of those rings too to get back 
um, 20%, and then the other 40 when I get Forge Aprons will put me at 100% fire protection too. And then I can kind of configure these other two however I want. So I can still get him to 100% shock protection. I think that's a great idea. I'm glad Jeff pointed that out, because it would have really sucked if I had sent my king into battle against those Manticore Riders with all of his defense, only to have him get stunned and killed anyway. So good call there. Uh, Jeff also said I should consider building mature reed snakes for dealing with blue, as they do poison damage will be good against elves. Probably is a good idea to consider switching that production over. I think I'm going to go ahead and actually do that now. Um, I have another unit selected, so I need to be careful not to auto-path him all the way down here. Um, let's see here. Back up here. So that Naga Matriarch, yeah, it's currently set on infinite matriarch production. I am going to take that off cancel that and I'm gonna get the Marsh of the Serpents and eh, can this city afford a production hurry yeah it can minus 100 happiness for five turns 180 gold I'm not doing a very good job keeping my gold income or my gold above 100 though am I let's do merchandise for just one turn then I might be able to hurry production on that on the next turn depending on what else I got going on and then Jeff also had some general good advice about putting some towers down here underground in this new area that I've kind of broken into in the caverns. Um, obviously, this is one major point that I need to watch out for enemies coming through this area here. Um, as usual, Jeff had good advice with regard to placement of towers. And I think I'm going to put one like up in here, like where that dirt wall is, which will overlook both the bridge and this other route here. And then probably not a bad idea to put one over here that can peek out and see this bridge. Fortunately for me, this area is currently closed off, so I'm hoping it stays that way. Okay, and that is all the comments, so let's get right to it here. Um, I want to crush anything in my path. Okay, good plan. Let's go like this. This would be... I actually do need to use this battle as an opportunity to patch up some of these undead. They're kind of, They're kind of pretty beat up. I think I'll send them in. That's an empty bandit camp up there, I think, unless it's filled with some unit that has urban concealment. Okay, they're good. They're charging a fully healed army. One of the armies that's going to heal fastest. Alright, move up a little bit, and let's go ahead and heal this guy. And this is the other guy that needs healing. Always good to have battles to use as opportunities for healing. I don't think I have any of anybody else with heal undead other than the Theocrat. It'd be nice to get him down there to patch somebody up. Uh, but we're getting charged kind of fast here, so let's move you back here and try not to expose my own units. Uh, phalanx would go well there. Try to get this guy sort of behind the enemy units. Oh, that's a berserker. I was thinking that was a deep guard. Okay, that won't work. Well, these guys will all be fine, and they have Resurgence, so I'm not too worried about them. Probably should use them more as an opportunity to just get XP than anything else. And I'm hoping to get this guy down to help out with some of these undead. Maybe that Wraith King would be a good candidate. Yeah, he can start moving, making his way that way. Uh, anybody else can get XP? I'll go ahead and give... Guardian Flames to the Knight. Might be better to do that after my units take a pounding here, but... Oh well, I got a Theocrat that can heal somebody too if he really needs to. Okay, so you hit the troll that has regrowth anyway. He also has killing momentum, I believe, so I can do this. That double kill. Um, how about I use that Wraith to turn this guy around? He won't like. Appreciate that hit. Get a little lifesteal out of it too. See so yeah, how this Warbreed likes that. Okay, then I can move here, 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 and here. And I believe I do have heal undead in here somewhere. There it is. 
Might actually be better on one of those Titans. 88 out of 108. You, I just need to stand there. Yeah, I'll actually heal more health on the Titan, so I'll do that. I just hate having to find it in here. I might want to consider moving it. Well, actually, it's in those items, so I would think it'd be near the top. I just have a lot of abilities. Okay, so you already done your buff. We'll just let these guys get this kill. Always good to see them gain levels. He has Guard Breaker. I could just smash this guy to little pieces. I'm going to. I could have. Eh, I should. I could have made that last a turn longer and gotten some extra XP with my Theocrite healing other stuff, but. Then again, the Goblin Berserker would have just suicided itself on me anyway. Whoops. Okay. Uh, I don't see any reason to bring more people in this battle under this group. For the sake of time, I won't bring my Theocrat in and do stuff with him. I just kind of want to keep the pace up. I could try to squeeze some more XP out of him. But I just want to kind of keep things moving here, especially getting this close to the end of the game. Hopefully. Uh, for this one, we'll let the Archon Titans take a little bit of damage first and then heal them afterwards. Keeping in mind that those Lost Souls do spirit damage. They won't do much before getting smashed, but they'll do a little. Hi, guys. They might actually all die on this turn, we'll see. Nope, that guy will live. Okay, yeah, they did do it. Like, that guy could definitely use some healing. Ah, yes, you can pass walls. Excellent. Stand on that ghost. Heal this guy. Kill him. Yeah, I'm just going to smash the reanimator. Okay, so Undead Army's pretty much topped off on health, and yes, there are scoundrels in there with urban concealment. Should not be an issue for this army. And they're all just scoundrels, right? Okay. Then we are just auto-combating that. And that is not particularly useful. I'll just grab a little bit of extra gold. That might have given me enough to start the production of that reed serpent thing, but then again, I wouldn't be able to hurry it. All right, now general concept for where I want everybody else to go. Don't suppose that these guys can make it to that spot, no. I suppose I'll camp out here for now. Okay, then down south, wait, okay, I got a, a city ex, uh, wants me to decide its fate. I'm going to just absorb goblins, because I think swarm darters with that would be pretty great. Um, yeah, I could probably take their capital city and raise it. 
pillage it. it would be, actually, I should pillage it, get a ton of money. Or I could keep it and migrate that city to goblins if I wanted to. I got a few options there. Kind of want to find out what's up here. I almost guarantee you this spy drone is going to die, but I want more intel on this far northeastern corner. Okay, that spy drone is still moving along on his way. I think this lost soul is going to head down here. Actually, I can grab that mana pile. Can't hurt. And then make my way into that area. And I think this flyer is probably destined to go to that lake. I can get a little bit of this filled in because there's haste berries there. I can move one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I can do this. I can actually take a peek in here and see. We got a chicken, a few shamans, cockatrice, a few shamans. Unicorn and a Blight Doctor. That's not a very particularly tough... Yeah, that's not a very particularly tough Forbidden Sanctum. Go there, here, and then make his way out this direction. Um, should be okay parking on the mountain here. Okay, I've got these guys coming down. Let's back up. It's fine. This guy coming in to serve as a nice replacement for the poor knight who lost his life in the previous battle. These guys, I think, are all pretty much out of movement. I'll just pile him onto that stack. Do not have much in terms of healing. Okay, and then I think these guys are... Yeah, I was moving them forward because I had taken control over this area. Um, I will go ahead and auto-combat this one as well. Yeah, I didn't expect that group would be particularly much of a problem. We'll dig our way through, and they can just about make it to that city. All right, let's see what my boats find out here. There are some water structures. A sunken city. I'm curious. Let's see what's in there. Might be some good treasure. I haven't gotten to do much with the... Holy crap, no. No, 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 no. We're not going up against three Krakens. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We'll find something else to pick on. Like these little mermaids here. There's something about shooting mermaids with cannonballs in this game that's just really fun. So I want to try to take as little damage as possible because these guys, the builder that was with them, is kind of long gone right now. So um, I do believe they've lined themselves up for a couple perfect cannonball shots. I don't want to take advantage of that. If I go here... Well, not quite perfect, but pretty good. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is take this shot here. Actually, I'm going to back up as much as possible first. Take that shot. Back this guy up as much as possible. It should be a couple more spaces. And take this shot. two. I should be able to kill this one. Kill both of them, okay. Good, I was hoping I'd have enough movement to get over here. From here, I can hit these two. And then I could definitely flame both of them. I don't know if I can... Oh wait, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can cannonball both of them, no problem. Go back here with this guy, make sure... Yep, I should be able to kill them all in one burst of cannon fire here. 
Yep, there we go. Cannons versus mermaids. Cannons win. Okay, just 48 gold. Not much, but it's something. Um, and I'm getting a little more intel about what's out here in this eastern part of the map. I'm going to sail up here and maybe see if I can cause any trouble for yellow or get a sense of how this, this bay that I found in here, how that's set up. Okay, so this builder is currently on his way to build a fort. I believe it was here was the spot I was looking at. After it is done, I will send it up here to dig out tunnels for towers. Um, this route up here, I might put a fort in this area eventually. Maybe I'll do that after the towers are up. It won't be as good of a fort because there are ways to get around it, but it'll be better than nothing. And then maybe with enough roads, I can kind of move units around as needed. Well, we'll put them on hold for now. Uh, the Sorcerer Army needs to join up with these Naga Matriarchs ASAP. I think that... Uh, oh yeah, I was kind of waiting until they got here to go after the Eldritch Pit. So that's fine. Could go ahead and attack those guys now, I suppose. Most of them are going to have mind control immunity. Oh, these guys have 100% spirit protection. The only ones I would be able to maybe convert would be the martyrs. I think I'll just take these guys out now while everyone's here. Give me an opportunity to heal some stuff. I don't necessarily need martyrs anyway that badly. So what I was saying about my king and the items might be useful if anyone wants to remind me about doing that after I'm done with the tireless boots. If I start to do something else with my capital city, just throw me a reminder that I was going to use it to build shock resistance items for the king. That would be helpful. Oh yeah, I have thunderstorm. That. You have made the mistake of charging my whole army. You will pay for it. You will get rammed. Eat lightning from the heavens. Oh no, one damage. Oh, look at them all grouping up nice and tight formation there. Let's make them pay for that. Cannonball there. Oh gosh, that wrecked some people. The Crusader certainly didn't care much, but made short work of the martyrs. Okay, the critical hit, the Crusader cared a little bit about that one. Just gonna have this guy heal himself a bit. And I did get the stun. All right. Oh, good try, buddy. Okay, what can I do here? Touch by faith for a little extra XP. They can try to dispel it on themselves for a little extra XP. And that's gonna be about it. Well. Why don't we just ram him? For the fun of it. And a little bit of health. Whoops, I actually probably did that wrong. That's a Shrine to the Wizard King. Eh, it's not gonna matter. The next battle is gonna be against that structure anyway, <laughs> but the knight's the only one who got the blessing from that. I'm just going to keep piling up units here, I think. Once I'm reasonably certain that the Tigrans aren't a threat anymore, I will move on. But for now, 
I'm gonna play it safe. A uh, whole bunch of spiders. I could probably try to befriend one of those. Maybe make up for the hunter spider I lost above ground with the giants. Um, well, heck, I've got the mana to cast it and it gives it a bunch of XP, so let's do it. Nothing else he's going to be using it for on this turn. It actually might be kind of working against me because obviously when they're attacking these enemy or these random spawns, they're not attacking my units, which is good in some ways, but bad because I, I lose out on some XP. On the right side, it'll make things go a little faster. It helps for dealing with situations like me getting webbed. All right, I'm gonna try to web him. Alright, that'll give me some buy me some time to deal with all this other stuff. Yes, I was really hoping to stun that one in particular. That's gonna make this easy. Let's try to prevent that ogre from coming down and causing too much trouble. We'll leave the knight on defense there. Alright, buzz off, would you? I'm going to sneak around this way, I think. And try to befriend this guy. Resisted. Okay, well that's not good for you. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. At least make sure that my units are getting all these kills. Okay, that's everybody. Alright, now who's left and what can I do? I can nourishing meal somebody? So, what I'll want to do now is just nourishing meal. I'm going to get him out of the way because he doesn't matter. When that spider comes back, I will just reweb it or try to reweb it. And if I can succeed, that buys me a little more time to do like this. There's enough units on the battlefield yet. And if anyone needs even a shred of health, I will try to heal them. I don't think anyone does, actually. I'm pretty sure everybody's at full health. So on that note, I actually do need this spider. Because I'll still get XP for the king. And then I guess we'll let the phalanx do his thing. Worth 200 gold. Protecting Sandals of the Rainforest. Not really feeling that. We'll take the money. Alright, so next on their agenda is that ruin up there. And then I'm going to go get the dungeon. And he also leveled up again. I don't see a reason to not give him warm at night. I don't know... I mean, natural immunity maybe... The thing is, like, I'm not really going up against any units that have much in terms of frost or again, in terms of poison. Maybe there are better things. Sustainable more warfare might be good. He's got some decently high-level units with him. But 
they're just tier threes. They're not actually tier fours. If you guys have ideas for what might be useful for this guy, actually, you know what? Just for the sake of helping keep him alive, I'm going to bump his health up to 70. I think that's not a bad idea. I kind of bypassed a lot of that earlier in the game. Oh, yeah, and don't want to leave here without putting up a fortress. I have no idea what this group of units was doing. Although, I was thinking those fairies might actually be a useful addition to the sorcerer's army. Possibly replacing... Well, actually there's nobody in particular that needs to be replaced. The knight's good. The golem is maybe questionable because he's a machine and therefore vulnerable to electricity, so casting thunderstorm isn't really great for him. Yeah, I might throw in another fairy. Makes his army kind of support heavy, but eh, heck, he's got chaos rip, he'll be fine. So that's a toadstool fairy, though. I want... Oh, they're both toadstool fairies. I think this one's going to join their army, and I'm probably going to drop the robot. And I'll drop both juggernauts to replace the matriarch so that they can do whatever they want with shock damage. Now hopefully this fairy, now the fairies do, do they do some fire damage, but they do a little more shock damage, so it more or less balances out in terms of the thunderstorm effect. Um, however, I am hoping, and I almost certainly will with all the charming stuff that I have, I will get a uh, baby shock serpent to replace that fairy anyway. I'll put you on hold ground for now. I might want to reinforce, well, I don't know, with with opening up this new area, I probably need units in here just in case, so. I know my armies are kind of a mess here now. I'll sort of sort them out as time goes on. Okay, good. End of the turn. Um, now, did I have enough movement to attack the Tigrans on this turn, or are they out until, they're out until next turn? Okay. So we'll see if the Tigrans try to launch any sort of counterattack. I, I sort of doubt it. Um... In the meantime, I'm going to cast... I think I'm going to start summoning Earth Elementals. I know, I think I think it was Jeff. Uh, possible, I apologize if I'm wrong about that. I know somebody mentioned casting um, Embrace Darkness on Edoras. I don't think I really need to do that. This city's closer to the front line and already has Embrace Darkness on it. Unless it looks like they're going to try to mount another attack, which if they do, I would hope they underestimate their ability like they did last time. I think it'd be better to summon these units here and just go straight after the, the Draconian with them. So on that note, I'm going to start summoning my Earth Elementals. I like Earth Elementals. I want some more of them. Okay, and then that's it. Next turn. I kind of am interested mostly in watching out what Yellow does, or seeing if he moves any unit. He did move something out there. I missed what it was. <laughs> he still got the, those useless boats. I almost forgot about those. Now, I don't think that Yellow has any other cities up here. There's no city names anyway, so I'm hoping this is the furthest north city that they have. Of course, we got blue. You know, when you think about it, I feel like getting, like, here, I'm reaching the eastern, sort of closing in on the eastern edge of the map, but this is actually the halfway point in terms of east-west. There's still a lot of territory over here. So, it's possible that the elves are backed up in there and actually have quite a bit of stuff. And I just haven't seen it yet because the map is big enough. Oh, Red Disjunct of the Great Mobilization. Well, I'm going to want to get that back up. I still want my Earth Elemental, though. So, I'm going to summon him. Send him to the front lines here. And then I'm going to start recasting Great Mobilization. Was that weakened? I don't know. I thought I had that at, uh, fully reinforced, so it's kind of unfortunate that he was so successful, successful in disjuncting it. 
but it'll only take me a few turns to get it back up. All right, so here I have another opportunity to get some free stuff. See, I have 392 extra research. 180 times two is 360, so that's almost perfect. I get regenerate walls, I get weapon kit, and now I can go on to get I don't know. Both of these are good. I'll just get Forge Blast because it takes one turn to get it. And then uh, finish off Earthquake and then I'll be all done with my research. This guy is basically a Necromancer Theocrat now. Heal Undead, Necromantic Aura, Control Undead. That's kind of cool though. I'm going to switch that bow up a little higher because I'll never use the short bow. When I have a longbow. Uh, a couple other items came in. Uh, the king does have phase now, which I don't know if I'll be able to get him pounce. Pounce is very useful for uh, a unit that's basically a tank. I don't know if I'll be able to get him pounce, but I should be able to get him, or I do have him phase. So that might still come in kind of handy. Pounce and defensive strike are both very good for any unit that's built like a tank. I already know. Necromancer or the Theocrat has that. Oh yeah, and I got another Book of Domination down here. Okay, so I want to I want to take on the I want to go straight after the Tigrans here. I want control of the city. I especially want all of the view range that this city is going to provide. The uh, trick here is that they have I'm going to have to move on to the mountains which I guess isn't a problem. I can't really surround them otherwise because of that water there. That's okay. They can still move a little bit afterwards. Um, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. They actually should be able to move a couple spaces and get into the center of the city. The King's Army, I want to make sure somebody can get up there. I'm going to send just one unit in because I might have to be a little careful with how I move this stuff. I want to make sure to end the turn in a triangle sitting on the city, basically. Let's uh let's go with a unit that has either flying or just a lot of movement. I guess the machines for at least one more turn have a good bit of movement. Okay, so another siege battle. Last the Tigrans so far have not really had an answer for all of this siege. Alright. There's a lot of mana core riders up on the wall. I'm going to want... Okay, so when th whenever they decide to come running out of their wall, I'm going to want to make sure I have both Juggernauts ready to just unload on them. Because there's a good chance they'll pack up. On that note, I actually don't know where I'm going with that flame tank, because I'm going to want them here too. I'm just going to pile all of the siege together. In fact, pretty much everybody is going to go down here. Why not? Oh, hey, knight. I almost forgot you were down there. Uh, pounding with trebuchets doesn't really concern me too much. All right, so you don't have tireless yet, but you do have a heck of a lot of defense. And a few of them are gonna pounce, so I'm not gonna be able to retaliate anyway. So I think the king is probably good to go here. I'll try to lure some of those guys into attacking my hero. And then I can maybe phase him out. Well, unless the human attacks me, he won't be able to phase. But he has 100% fire protection right now. So the flame tanks can shoot at him no problem. And that might be enough. I'll have to be a little careful where I place the juggernaut shots, but the flame tanks will be fine. And I could even move up some firstborns to kind of help him out if I feel the need to do so. Alright, 
knock it off. Okay, so I'm just curious. When my king is on defense, it's like 26 now. Holy smokes, it goes up to 37. And with the helmet he's getting, it's going to end up being at like 40. That's ridiculous. I can move him up here without any concerns about anything hurting me. Go ahead and do your worst. Although I do want to keep him, I don't want him to get multiple hits on him if possible. So we'll keep him there. And I want to keep the flame tanks just outside of their range. We'll see if they bite. They might not go after him. Man, I've gotten spoiled with great mobilization. These things feel slow now. If they want to come after the firstborns, that's fine too, I suppose. Alright, please go after His Royal Highness. I dare ya. Nope. If, okay, no, they're scared. They're running away. Alright, well, it looks like they need a little encouragement, so let's give it to them. Keep a decent distance here and just blow up their walls and see what they do. I can outrange them, so at the end of the day, they're going to have to come to me. What do you say, guys? That unit's ensnared in a net. They very well might go after him. Nope, I think they need to lose their range unit. At that point, they should come charging. I would expect them to anyway. Do I have a unit with rapid reload engineer somewhere? I thought I did. Please tell me I didn't leave. Oh my gosh, I left him all the way up here. Well, he's not going to be very helpful this battle, is he? That's okay. Um, let's see here. I don't think I have rapid reload on any of these guys. I might have it on my king. Yeah, he's got it. But I want... I'll just wait a turn and light up that trebuchet on the next round. I can heal the flame tank, I suppose. Perfect 25. They might shoot the warlord with the trebuchet now. Yeah, I shouldn't be surprised. His guard was down. Alright, well, it doesn't matter. Because you're going to get lit up on this turn. Alright, now what are you going to do? Again, I want to make sure my king is in range of most of this stuff here. You know, I'm actually just going to leave him within range of those, those Tigrans. They should all pounce him, I would think. The human, I'd have to run over here behind this rock. There they come. Alright. Couple of them went after him. I'm surprised they didn't pounce. Well, either way, they're gonna get roasted. Now is a good time for. Oh, wait, my king can't face because they actually attacked him. Okay. We'll just leave him on defense then. Uh, I would love to hit both of those manicure right or the, both of those guys with a cannon. You know what I'll do? I'll just 
sit here. I wish those Juggernauts both had their ability to... Well, you know what? Actually, I can do something creative with one of the Juggernauts, at least. Let's fire Broadside. Mess up those guys a little bit. And I want to spread out the damage for this guy here. So I'm going to attack him once with a couple different units. Oh, he has first strike. Oh, yeah, because um, the Warlord spell, right? Okay. That's fine. I'm still going to use up all his movement. Fortunately, they don't have Relentless Army cast. Okay, let's try these guys a little bit more. I'd like to be catching that other one in there, but... Oops. You might want to get out of the way. Oh, I can catch him in there. I was maybe doing this wrong. Yeah, my king still doesn't have a whole lot of health, so maybe I shouldn't be too terribly reckless with him. Need to do something about that mana core rider there. Would like to do something about the Sphinxes as well, if possible. Maybe the Warlord could pounce them. At least get in their way a bit. Okay, I want to use, I want to use this guy to. Okay, he had first strike, so that's two action points. I want to hit him with one other thing. I'm kind of nervous to hit him with my king, though. I still got the cannonball. I've got a fairy who could do a decent bit of damage to that manticore rider if I move the cannon into the right position. I suppose the cannon could point blank if. Can the cannon point blank? Yeah, it can. The problem is this Manticore Rider is looking the wrong way. I could turn it around with the king. See, he's still got pounce, and I don't want him to use that. So I really need to take away an action point. Alright, I'm just going to do that. Super thrilled about leaving his guard down, but I think the rest of my unit should be able to handle this. Okay, definitely don't want to hit them from the wrong angle here, so. I'm just going to play it safe. Like this, like this. I'm going to hit that guy for a bunch of damage. can do a decent bit to that Sphinx there. Just hoping the Sphinxes don't ignore... I'm hoping the Sphinxes don't ignore the um, fact that they got the Tigran right behind him and try to move and flank my king or something. Should be okay, I think. No, they're just gonna go after other stuff. Okay. Man, they might not have had a strong enough melee attack to do much against him, even with flank attacks. We're coming. All right. And probably should just well, let's focus on killing these things first. Probably gonna want a war cry and hit something. All right, 
good job, guys. All my units are all messed up for the flame tanks to be particularly useful here. I'd like to get my king through to turn that mana core rider around. Somebody needs to kill that thing. Oh, I guess the... I guess this guy would do a fine job. Sort of. Make sure I'm not taking any hits. Okay, he's good. Now, do I want to just shoot him or charge him? I'm going to play it a little bit safe and shoot him. Turns him around, gives the phalanxes a nice strong hit on him. And one, two, three for devastating charge. Okay, cool. He is gone. Toadsville Fairy will wreck that thing. And I think that's it. Alright. I think I should have maybe healed some people there at the end. Because I got kind of beat up a little bit. That battle was a little harder than I thought. I think it's just the way the Manicore Riders approached me. It just didn't work out very well, and those rocks were kind of in the way of stuff, too. Okay, anyway, these guys can get... They can't make it there. They can basically make it onto that tile. King's army could get there. That army could get there. Okay, here's what's going to happen. They go there. Back for a second. Take the city and move on like that. It's pretty much most of their movement used up. I guess I can move just a bit further. Yeah, I can move into more of a forward position here. Okay, got a nice view. Man, they did they really didn't clear their stuff that well. And you know what? Being down here would have actually been closer to where I need to go next because I'll be taking that road southeast and going down in the direction of their capital. Probably should have stayed where I was. Okay, well that's uh, that's all right. We've got a great foothold here, and I think actually Tigran's Empire has been about cut in half. I'm assuming this is also one of their cities out here, but that's kind of a small one. I think they've only got maybe these three left. That might be it. We will see. Got the dragon dwelling up here, so they can't very easily go that way either. So I know that's gone. Res the All Father. Ugh. All units that suffer to belong to a player with evil alignment suffer minus three resistance. Maybe that's why I took a little extra fire damage in that one from those sphinxes. I don't know. I'm gonna. I want to check to see if the other, any of the, either of the other two players have a good alignment, because that could make things a little bit tricky going up against them. So we've got Javaska, who is pure evil. Okay, Warlord is slightly evil, and and he's neutral. Okay, so the only one who maybe could move into the good territory would be the Draconian. Let's hope that doesn't happen since the fight with him is about ready to go crazy. There's some animals up there too that are going to be... A, could be a little bit of a pain if they try to take the city when I leave. Hopefully they come after me now. Bunch of extra gold. Oh my gosh, I have 4,000 gold. Okay, um... I need to spend some money on stuff. I think, for starters, I'd like to go ahead and hurry that Naga Dwelling in production of the Marsh of Serpents. Get that done. Let's see here. I need a temple here. I can basically, everybody can get their building projects done on this turn. Everybody gets stuff. Go with a temple there. Oh, there was a few Praise the Leader Festivals. There was like three of them. I 
didn't even notice that until post turn. Wow, just money pouring in from all directions. This is this is great. All right, that city I think is Oh wait, you know what? I'm not producing knights anymore. So I don't need embrace darkness back here. And these guys can just park on the city. Um, this city already has the Grand Palace, so I don't need that to do anything. Um, I migrated something to Elves. I think I migrated this city to Elves. Looks like they migrated it back. I don't remember why I migrated it to Elves, so... <laughs> I'm sure there was a very good reason. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to... Actually, I think the Tigrans dislike me severely. Quite a bit. Yeah, unhappy minus 200. I kind of haven't done much to make them very happy with me. Would this be good for a Tigran city, though? Well, we got... Bonuses to infantry, bonuses to irregular units, we got bonuses to machines, and bonuses to pikemen. I guess it'd be just as good as any other. I will go ahead and let them keep the city. Maybe we won't completely alienate them. But I might end up doing changing that anyway, because... Oh, I think part of the reason I migrated the other city to elves was because it was faster. Maybe it was dwarves. I don't actually remember what I did there. But for this one, I think I'll go ahead and we'll we'll let them... Probably going to build machines here anyway, so I'm just going to absorb it. You guys can let me know if you think I should change my mind about that. I don't really have any particular thing that I really want that city to do, I suppose. Okay, we'll want a master's skill. Actually, I want the... Um, both of those are going to be three turns either way, so we'll get the hospital first. Uh, knowledge boost two, that was the 392 I got earlier. Public baths. I want one more priest going up here, I think. Just a couple extra units. Okay, this is the... Oh, this was the city that's been building machines all along. I don't see a reason to stop. I'm gonna keep going. More juggernauts, more flame tanks. Public baths. Oh wait, this city desperately needs production. Let's go with the builder's hall first. This is great. Literally everybody can build whatever they want, and I don't even have to worry about it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this builder. Actually, it's probably time to wrap this episode up, so I think I'm going to cut it off here, right in the middle of the turn. So we got a couple things. First off, what do I do with this builder? Should I keep him up here and build roads? Should I maybe send him underground to do anything down there? I already have a builder in that area, so probably not. I think he should be doing something up here. Probably roads, maybe a fort somewhere, if you guys see a good spot. Um, other things to think about would be... Um, there was something else. I, I mentioned it a few minutes ago, so you might be able to go back in the video. I My mind just bounces all over the place when I'm doing these videos, so I move from one thing to the next and sometimes lose track of where I'm at. So... Um, any other ideas, thoughts, or comments, you guys can go ahead and just leave them down below. As always, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Thanks for being patient. Thanks for being patient with me, with my constant forgetfulness and your gentle reminders. It is actually very helpful because recording these once every couple days, and then having other games that I'm playing with friends in between, I tend to get my Age of Wonders all scrambled up. So, all right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.